Hey everyone, Hathematics here. Unless you've been living under a rock recently, you've probably noticed the disturbance in the force this weekend. Bungie shook up the trial's matchmaking formula, and that decision has ruffled more than its fair share of feathers. I'm not usually known for making hot take pieces, but I've got something to say. First and foremost, I wanted to explain my prior experience with Trials in the Destiny franchise. I've been playing consistently since the D1 beta and have been a mainstay in the Trials playlist for years now. I took a few seasons off and beyond light, but prior to that, it was my favorite weekend hobby. Gathering friends of assorted skill levels and diving into the playlist was my favorite thing to do. I never let my win-loss record, my KD, or stats bother me at all. It was about the challenge and about the overall experience while playing with friends. I've only been flawless a grand total of 13 times since Trials of Osiris launched over six years ago. It's not exactly something to brag about, but while I was always good enough in the games to make flawless a possibility, I was prone to costly mental lapses that were often the difference between flawless and coming up just short. So as you might come to expect, last weekend was a huge shock to my system. I felt like for the first time ever that I was good enough to pair up with one other solid guardian to help guide any player to the lighthouse. It felt great, but it also felt a bit hollow. The intensity was missing. I missed those enormous turning point moments. I missed the 1v3 4-4 clutch ups to save the card. I looked back at the amount of loot that I received over the weekend and it was utterly absurd. I was able to focus farm god rolls on three different weapons and got a very good adept SMG, all in a single weekend. It led me to the question, how many others have already gotten their desired role and have decided never to return to the game mode? So while I genuinely enjoyed being showered with loot, I was concerned about the effects that reward structure would have on the longevity of the playlist. Jump forward a week and Bungie made a number of changes. Most of them were universally praised, such as adding quitter penalties and removing special ammo regeneration on revives. The one that's caused a massive rift in the community is the Flawless Player Pool. Upon reaching Flawless, your account would only match against other Flawless players. This is designed to weed out the Flawless players and give the more casual audience a friendlier playing experience. By design, this suggests that both the post-Flawless experience and the pre-Flawless experience would get easier by the day. As more players reach the lighthouse, lower skilled players would continue to be funneled into that flawless pool. The question becomes, what motivates a casual player to continue playing once they've hit the lighthouse for the first time? The answer is not much. Herein lies the problem. By locking the entire account against other flawless players, it means those casual players will go from an enjoyable experience to a much sweatier experience, almost instantly. I would equate it to going from a heroic ordeal to a grand master. Unless you are really ready for that experience, you're gonna have a bad time. My personal concern here is that I want to play with a wide number of people across the weekend. While I understand the goal of providing a healthier, self-sufficient play-in experience for the casual audience, it's made me feel like a detriment to my friends. I'm dragging them into a flawless player pool that they're not ready for and don't want to play against for an entire card. So what's the solution? I love the idea of catering to a more casual PVP audience. I also love the idea of rewarding the diehard player base and giving them a challenging end game PVP mode. My personal suggestion would be to do two things. Keep rule sets the same for at least three weeks before pushing a change. This allows Bungie to gather a proper sample size in a controlled environment. By changing the rules after the first weekend, it's going to be tough to pinpoint the reason behind a decline in playtime and participation. I'd like to see them establish control first, then push a focused rule change to gauge the numbers. Three-week tests offer enough time for player churn, map variation, and any other factors that might come up. Number two, keep the flawless player pool active on cards that are currently flawless, but release the account from that pool upon reset. This will increase the difficulty of farming for adept weapons and trials engrams on seven win cards, but will preserve the player experience on the initial rounds. This will also allow multiple groups of friends to rotate fire teams without feeling like they're dragging their team down with their matchmaking. Overall, I respect Bungie's efforts here and applaud them for the quick implementation. It is a massive and obvious change from previous seasons, 
And I'm very excited about that. However, I think this was too much too soon. Trials needed at least one more weekend to breathe before pushing meaningful changes to matchmaking. I want to respect all parties involved here and understand that matchmaking debates are like a Kobayashi Maru scenario. However, I feel that by gathering further data before implementing matchmaking changes and by essentially creating a higher difficulty prestige trials experience, you're protecting the interests of all parties. As you may see in the clips in the background, in spite of these matchmaking changes, I've still managed to be having an absolute blast in the play mode. I yearn for these tougher fights and will continue to give my all towards helping friends and clanmates experience the lighthouse this weekend. If you have an opinion that you'd like to share, please fire away in the comments below. And if you like the content, please like and sub. I'm Hathematics, and I hope to see you at the lighthouse.